Change. I'm Dan Jones. Thank you so very much for joining us. We have lots to talk about today. The governor says he is going to go forward with his push to require some sort of drug testing for folks who want food stamps or unemployment benefits. Yet another Milwaukee baby dies while reportedly sleeping with an adult. And is the Milwaukee City Hall such a great and historic building that we should keep dumping tens of millions of dollars into ongoing repairs? Before we start, let me introduce everybody. You know Kevin Fisher, who spent many years as a broadcast journalist? Of course, longtime newspaper columnist Joel McNally? And Gerard Randall, education consultant and job creation expert? Rick Horowitz is going to be along with commentary at the end of the show. All right, let's talk first about Governor Walker pledging to make good on his campaign promise to require some sort of drug testing for people who apply for unemployment compensation or food stamps. Leaders in the legislature say it will be one of their top priorities this next session. Is this mean-spirited and humiliating, or does it make sense to make sure that someone who gets taxpayer money while they're looking for a job is clean enough to actually pass a drug test and get a job? Um, it's not a new idea, for starters. I remember uh, this notion surfacing back in the uh, late 90s when President Clinton was reforming uh, the welfare system in the U.S. I think the spur has come from, particularly in this state, manufacturers uh, who are looking for employees and want employees who, uh, when they make application, uh, come in uh, drug-free. And a good deal of what uh, certainly is, is popping in the legislators' ears is that people who are going in to make application for jobs uh, might get through the initial screenings, but they aren't passing the drug test, particularly for marijuana. Uh, so I'm certain that uh, the legislature will take it up. There will be lots of testimony on it, and particularly from those who uh, are uh, employers that have faced the issue of having to deal with this. I remember uh, Tim Sullivan, when he was with Busiris Siri, was certainly making the claim, and later when he went on the state's Workforce Investment Board as its chair, uh, he went all around the state and he heard from employers who were just making uh, that very same claim. And so I, I'm not surprised that they're taking it up. Uh, I, I do think, though, it's going to be a hot conversation, and certainly uh, the people who are uh, the most vested in it potential employers and potential employees uh, are really going to surface uh, a lot of acrimony around this issue. Is it really mean, Joel, to say to a guy, hey, you do coke, you're not going to get food stamps, or you smoke pot, you're not going to get unemployment comp? How about, uh, you know, if you've got a drug problem, your kids don't get to eat? How about if uh, you've been laid off through no fault of your own? Um, and you happen to smoke marijuana recreationally, uh, your family doesn't get to survive on unemployment benefits. Uh, even though we have a lousy job climate in this state, and it's the fault of the governor and the legislature that they haven't created very many jobs in this state. Uh, I, I, I will say this. No, I'll agree with, with Gerard. I can't be surprised that this, you know, even farther to the right wing legislature would talk about it and would rev revel in talking about it. But, um, as Gerard knows, uh, it's also against federal law. <laughs> it's, against, it's against the regulations for both food stamps and unemployment benefits. The only reason it came up in the campaign when Scott Walker was running against Mary Burke was at the last minute they were, they were resorting to every dirty trick in the book, making up phony stories, and in this case, trying to play <laughs> on racism in this state. It's a coded message, and it's, it's, it's coded based on racial stereotypes. We know that, you know, the, the population in the state of Wisconsin is only 6 percent African-American. But when you talk about, let's drug test people who are on unemployment or drug test people who are getting food stamps, uh, the white population says, yeah, let's drug test those black people that are doing all these drugs. Uh, <laughs> More, many more white folks are on unemployment and getting food stamps than black folks. That's right. That's why this uh, isn't racist. And, and, yeah, that, that is why you use the message, and it's a dog whistle message to uh, white voters who, who are racist. And, and then Scott Walker can say, well, I'm not racist because, you know, more white folks are on those, those <clears throat> programs than black folks. It is, it is, it is a junk message. What in the world—who in the world would deny food to children 
because their parents might not pass a drug test. I mean, even if it were legal, who in the world would do that and say, we'll let hungry children go hungry uh, because we don't like their parents? Or uh, if someone loses their job, uh, believe me, the people who've lost their jobs and have been laid off, who've worked all their lives, they know what they need to do to get employed. They know that they're going to have to apply for a ton of jobs before they get any. Uh, you're not helping people. All, all you're doing is being ugly, and ugly and racist. And, and I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm not shocked that this new legislature is going to be ugly and racist. But in fact, this is a meaningless thing, unless Scott Walker becomes president of the United States, which, good luck, buddy. Uh, you know, this, this going nowhere, you can do all the ugly things in the legislature you want, but it's against the law. But Kevin, on the other end of the spectrum, there are, there are a great many people who think it's just a common sense proposal. Well, it is common sense. <laughs> the taxpayer doesn't want, the average taxpayer doesn't want his tax money uh, being spent in the, in this manner uh, uh, to feed I, children. Now, Joel, come on, you you went on and on and on. All right, nobody's trying to take food away from hungry children. Uh, they are drug they tested. Well, look, I think it's a great idea. I really do, and I I I, I think a lot of uh, the governor's supporters think it's a great idea. I've there there have do. been polls taken, uh, and there is great support nationwide. For this kind of kind of drug testing, uh, and it, and it's, it isn't new. I mean, they're doing it in the right. private sector all the time. Our former employer Joel uh, makes people take a drug test before you get before, before you can work there at the at the Journal Empire. And, um, and they were only allowed to do it before people worked there because we actually had a contract that prevented it. Well, but let me say this. All right, Wisconsin has a law. Uh, five states, including Wisconsin, has have have a law that says that if you have a prior drug felony conviction that you are going to be drug tested if be, before you get any benefits. In that case, there's reasonable suspicion that you might have a problem and that, that you might continue to use uh, drugs or, or, or alcohol and, and may need help. Uh, but what the governor is suggesting here, all right, he's suggesting that we drug test in cases where there is no reasonable suspicion. People that right. get unemployment benefits uh, uh, and have paid into that system. Mm -hmm. So that's where the that's where the rub is going to be. He's going to have a tough time uh, getting this uh, passed because you're going to have the usual crowd that's going to say that it's that it's unconstitutional. But having said that, and I think he knows the tough road he has to hoe. Uh, this is what endears him. To his fans and supporters and those that go go out and continually to vote for him, that he doesn't shy away from reform, he doesn't shy away from controversy, he doesn't shy away from ideas that you know some people may not may not like. He's out there saying, "Yeah, I'm going to fight Washington," and he said that on the, the night that he defeated Mary Burke. And I, I think this does endear him to all the people that like him. All right, <laughs> next yeah. topic. Milwaukee authorities are investigating what looks like it might be yet another case of a little baby dying while sleeping in the same bed with an adult. So far this year, it looks like there may have been as many as 16 of these co-sleeping deaths just in Milwaukee County. How sad that this happens so much that it hardly even makes the news anymore at all. Oh, well, but every time it does make the news, we seem to talk about it. Uh, we, we talked about this a lot. and. Yeah, it, it, you need an enormous public education campaign. The people uh, in, in dire circumstances in this community, uh, extremely poor people and people in extremely desperate conditions, uh, they don't watch the news. They don't watch this show, I'm sorry to say. They don't watch, uh, you know, pay attention to public service announcements. Uh, they're trying to survive. And, and it, a public education campaign on this is a long project because we know we know how few people read newspapers anymore. We know how few people, you know, even can keep up on what's going on in their community or want to keep up. And and if and if you are in a desperate situation in your personal life, um, you know, you've just got other priorities, and and it's a long term. You know, there have been some, I think, good strategies of of when 
people give birth, uh, make sure they leave the hospital with a crib, if nothing else. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we have to keep coming up with more and more strategies. Uh, it's, it is a sad situation. It, it's a desperately sad situation, but it mostly to, uh, involves people in desperately sad situations. If you beat your child to death, you'd be charged with a crime. If you roll over on your child and the child dies while it's sleeping in the same bed, should you be charged with a crime? Or is it just a tragic, horrible situation? Well, that's, it, it is a tragic, horrible situation either way. This is one of those instances when you do have the discretion of the district attorney and his staff to determine whether or not uh, there was intentionality in either of those two deaths, types of deaths. About two weeks ago, or maybe even last week, uh, BMO Harris Bank announced a better than three quarters of a, a million dollar grant to the United Way to address infant mortality, uh, which would include uh, an education campaign around uh, these kinds of deaths. And uh, we've put in a considerable amount of money uh, so far, even in addressing these kinds of deaths, particularly uh, in working with uh, the parents of newborns as they're exiting the hospitals. Uh, I, I, I don't want to make excuses for uh, why this is happening. Um, I, it, it's, it's, it's beyond sad that it does happen, especially given uh, the amount of, of money that we have put in into making parents aware of what they should and should not do in caring for their children. And there are just so many egregious things that happen with uh, parents who are in poverty in the care of their children, getting immunizations, for example, making sure that their kids get the proper screening so that they're prepared for learning when they go into kindergarten. All these kinds of things that they don't do, that I wish they did do, and if they did, they would certainly lead to healthier children uh, by the time they uh, reach the age of five. Um, it, it just, it's beyond my comprehension as to why that's just not happening. And frankly, there has to be some accountability uh, for personal responsibility mm -hmm. in this community. Mm -hmm. There just has to be. And we, we don't have it. Uh, we, we've, we've made the investment that we need to make to better educate, and at some point, these parents will have to step to the plate and do what responsible parents do. And if they know that sleeping with their child at that age poses risk for that child... But do we, do we hold them responsible? There, there, there can't, there, is there a single human being in this country, an adult, that doesn't know you don't sleep there in the same bed be. with the baby? There shouldn't many, be. Many. The, 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 there? No, there yeah. shouldn't be. Uh, uh, they had a, a similar situation in Philadelphia a few years ago where they had 57 of these deaths in a two-year span, and their public education campaign wasn't, well, you know, be careful and think, think twice about doing it. Their, their public education campaign was never do it. Never get in bed with your child. Never do it. Uh, public education campaigns, they don't work. Uh, the, the radio PSAs don't work. Three years ago, in 2011, the city of Milwaukee Health Department started a new, more aggressive campaign mm -hmm. that I thought could be pretty effective. They showed babies in beds with not their parents, but uh, big knives and cleavers, and some people thought that was offensive. Well, that apparently isn't working. And giving them free cribs isn't working. Uh, I think you can ch charge. Uh, I know the cases are hard to prove because there's not physical evidence and you have juries that side not uh, with the babies, the real victims here, but they side with the grieving parents and they empathize, empathize with them. Mm -hmm. You've got to do something serious and hold, hold people accountable. You, have, you had a case down in Georgia that went to their uh, uh, appeals court where he, the, the father rolled over on the baby <laughs> and killed the baby, but the mother was charged with and found guilty of involuntary manslaughter because she brought the baby to the bed. You've got to do something and hold these people accountable. And you can't say read a newspaper or look at a billboard or listen to the radio. That doesn't work. You, you, you charge them because there's a, there's a death here. This is risky dangerous behavior that has to be punished. You, you know what, you know, all this stuff about people have to take personal responsibility. Yep. And, and you know what, I would like to see someone in this community take responsibility for poverty. I would like to see a real serious 
some political leaders and community leaders and the Greater Milwaukee Committee and everyone else take responsibility for the poverty in this community. That's an excuse. Instead of instead, I'm not making an excuse. I'm talking about poverty. You you want the you want the the, the people who have, have undergone a horrible tragedy of a child being killed and they are in the middle of all kinds of horrible tragedies themselves caused by poverty. Yes, I want them punished. And, and, yep. you, and you want to pun, yep. punish? That's really going to help. Let me tell you, these people, well, people are going through. Would you be get, quiet a minute? I want to. I, I, I'm trying to make a and then point. Over on their baby. I'm trying to make a point. I don't feel sorry point. for him, Joel. I'm sorry. I, I know you don't. You don't feel sorry for anybody. You, you, as long as you're doing okay, you don't care about anyone else who's not doing okay. okay. But let me tell you this: we don't have political leadership in this community that says let's do something about poverty. Let's do something about joblessness. Let's do something about the wider and wider income gap in this community. The, the political leadership and even some of the bright ones uh, know that it's not a political winner. And so that is just not something that matters to them. You are talking about people who are the most powerless people in this community and say, why aren't you people, you know, using your power to, to change this situation? Well, because they have none. They have no income. They have very uh, again, little education. Okay, those are excuses. And, and, they, and they have very I'm little sorry, job it's possibilities. Uh, uh, behavior Apparent. that is to blame here, not the unemployment rate. Quit calling black people ignorant because something black I think you're pretty ignorant. If you get stoned or drunk out of your mind and go and to bed with a baby what, and then roll over on every kill one of these it, cases. I, I think that's beyond ignorance. If they bring a child into the world and are going to be responsible for that child, they certainly have resources that are available to them to do the minimal things in caring for that child. That includes Who says that. Since you don't have to pass anything to bring a child into this world. You don't. Since, you don't have to. You, you don't you, have to. You don't have to pass anything, but you certainly have access to health care. You've got access to doctors, nurses, social workers, guidance counselors. You name it. All those resources are available if you take the opportunity to avail yourselves of it. I want to give those resources to those people. That's what I'm saying. The people have to go yeah, to where let, those let, resources let's, let's are, and on, oftentimes they are no, the people they're no are further away right than a phone call. Community. That are available to people. There, there truly are. It, 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 and uh, again, fewer all the time under this governor. You well, know. I, I know it's everybody's fault except the the parent. That doesn't use the brains God gave them, Joel, and winds up killing their baby. You don't want to blame them. You want to blame everybody else. I, I, the governor, I, I, the I want to blame the fact that we Gerard, ignore the we ignore the, the problem. Blame where it belongs. We ignore these, the problem on, on these negligent parents. All right, next topic. So they finally got done fixing all that terracotta and tuck pointing on Milwaukee City Hall after so many years and something like $76 million. Now, city engineers say the building might need another $80 million to fix up a rotting and sinking foundation. Okay, the building's about 120 years old. Do you reach a point where you say, all right, enough is enough. Let's use the money to, to build a new building for the generations to come? Or do you, just, do you keep saying, this is historic? whatever it costs. Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of historic buildings, but this is laughable, because when they did the assessment initially on the building to determine uh, what the need would be in order to restore it, uh, part of that should have been an examination of the foundation <coughs> and the release of what that cost was going to be. And I think if anyone had known at the time that the overall cost was going to approach $200 million, and it'll probably exceed that yep. by the time, you know, all is said and done, look at how they've had to go back and redo much of what they claimed had been fixed uh, just on the, uh, on the terracotta. Uh, I, it, 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 this is the stuff that really makes you angry, because it's an allocation of money that we probably would not have had to have spent if there had been a proper assessment done the first time, if the work that had been done to date had been properly done the first time, um, and now to go back and ask taxpayers to foot it, when maybe that money could be used and, and uh, to address some of the issues that Joel has raised. Um, it, it, it makes you angry. Uh, it just makes you downright angry, because it's not a small little bit of money that uh, they're asking taxpayers to commit to, and not just for a short period of time. This is 
Uh, clearly, if you years. well, you're making a commitment for a building because of its historic value. Right. You're making this commi commitment for at least the next 50 years, and uh, who knows what problems are going to yeah, surface you say, you as a said result. The cost of. is laughable. How about this for laughable? When Joe Davis asks an engineer at, at a city hall meeting this week, mm -hmm. well, why didn't you? Why didn't you? take care of this when you found right. out uh, the footing was rotting. Uh, and the answer he got was, well, we had to fix the, you know, the upper structure that because bricks were falling, posing a, posing a hazard, of course, mm -hmm. uh, to p pedestrians below. They couldn't even get that fixed right. Um, and, and where are you going to come up with this, all this money? Well, the taxpayers, maybe you can borrow, uh, maybe because it's on the National Registry of Historic Places, maybe the, the feds can get involved. But, still that, the but, but that's still ta taxpayer money. Uh, I don't know how they sell this, but it looks like so far only Joe Davis has the courage to stand up and say this is far too much money. And there was, there was one report that said, that said okay, uh, just to put this all in, in, in uh, proper perspective, the huge new hotel that the Potawatomi just built cost 150 well, million. The money. <laughs> is it is it is it worth it to fix up an old city hall when you could, if you wanted, build a heck of a nice new one? Uh, this you said this building is 120 years old. Um, I wonder if the Potawatomi Hotel is going to be around 120 years. Probably not. Uh, I wonder, you know, how many you know, over 120 years, how many city halls would we have built? It, it, you're talking about the lousy job that the, the modern-day contractors have done on repairing the city hall? Uh, how many lousy buildings could they build over the next 120 years uh, to replace City Hall? City Hall, to me, is, is, is a gem. Yep. No, no and, and, it, and it should remain. And it's one of the things that makes Milwaukee a cool place. At any cost, uh, though? Uh, well, what do you mean at any cost? You know, if, if we can pay for it over the next 120 years, uh, it ain't going to cost us so much, I'll tell you. Uh, the truth of the matter is you do not want to destroy all of your historic buildings. You do not want to. Is, is, you know, d destroy and put up a bunch of junk uh, to replace some things that are irreplaceable. And and I call that building irreplaceable. I, I, mean, I agree. Uh, but uh, you know, but it, my goodness, and, and, $200 and, million. Dollars. Well, you know what? We spend money on things all the time uh, without even thinking about it. We, we, we'll go to another war again, uh, and we may be on the way there right now, and, and spend untold amounts of money for that without talking about how much it's going to cost, uh, without talking about the fact that we, can, we just completed two wars that, uh, you know, 10 years each, and they didn't accomplish anything. Joel, uh, and Joel, and you know what? You know what? <laughs> if we keep City Hall, which I predict we will, uh, we will have it, and and we will have something in this community that that no one else has, and that no one else would have had in this community if over the years people hadn't protected it. Yeah, a 120-year-old building, pilings underneath start rotting. Guess I, what? I agree. So it's 120 iconic. years I, later, you got to do something I don't, about it. I don't have the problem with investing the money and saving it. I think it should be saved. Yep. What I've got a problem with is this steady trickle of misinformation and, and, and then ultimately this cost becomes Sticker shock. Yeah, yeah. Be upfront with folks and about it. And you're talking about lousy contractors and lousy construction people and lousy people who restored the outside and then we had to go back and restore it again. And we should right. give them more money to to what? <laughs> All right. Back <laughs> to, to the lousy job. Back to politics for just a minute. The post-election word of the week in Washington: compromise. The warning of the week: don't poison the well. And the skeptic of the week: our own Rick Horowitz. Rick. So where's the compromise? I mean, his policies were on the ballot. He said so himself. And the voters considered those policies and made a choice. And that's why the results of the 2012 elections are so important. Oh, were you thinking of some other year? This year, for instance? After all, we do keep hearing that the losing side in 2014, by which they mean uh, President Obama, is supposed to compromise, supposed to respect the will of the voters. So where was all that compromising from the Republicans when they lost in 2012? or for that matter, in 2008. And it wasn't just Obama's policies on the ballot back then, but his name, too, against an actual Republican opponent, first John McCain and then Mitt Romney. The will of the voters? Millions more voters came out in those presidential elections than in these latest midterms, and Obama's victory margin both times was undeniable, or so you'd think. 
In fact, compared to those presidential mandates, last week's low turnout off-year results were more like a grunt, a, a belch of discontent. But elections have consequences, right? Sure. So uh, let's list all the ways the GOP compromised with Obama after his big wins. Yeah, that's what I came up with, too. But this time, after the Republicans did well, Obama's supposed to pack it in, wait for the moving vans. Doing anything else, they say, would poison the well for bipartisan cooperation. Poison the well. Because the well's been so pure and clean up to now, right? And anything toxic in the water down there, it's Obama's fault. And not, say, the Republicans who vowed on the very night he was first inaugurated, this has been reported, you understand, and never denied, vowed to oppose whatever the new president proposed, even if they used to agree with it. Think that might have poisoned the well? Or all those prominent Republicans who continued for years to question the basic legitimacy of Obama even holding office. What do you mean, born in Hawaii? He's a Kenyan, a Kenyan uh, socialist, Muslim, terrorist mole while other major Republicans, party leaders, did virtually nothing to stop that kind of talk for years. Think that might have poisoned the well? Right. So uh, spare me the sanctimony and the civics lessons. If Obama's finally realized he can't work with you and doesn't even want to, go look in the mirror. Or better yet, go look at your reflection at the bottom of that well. Well, thanks, Rick, and thank you so very much for joining us. Stay warm. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.